Okay, so I know I'm pretty much the last person to be mentioning this now, but still, it needs to be said, the Randy Moss trade. Now, personally, I've been a fan of Randy Moss for most of his career, even the years where he was with Oakland. Mm-hmm. I actually got to meet him once, like in a Raiders camp thing, like they came to like a city near me, so I went. It was pretty cool. Got to meet a few of the famous ones, like Naomi Osmond, Randy Moss. Uh, I think Justin Fargus was there. It was it was a few years ago. But anyway, what does this mean from a fantasy perspective? Well, for for one thing, Brett Favre, he's finally useful again. <laughs> okay, so I know of a lot of leagues where Brett Favre has been given up on, which means he'll be in your waiver wire pool. I'd say that Brett Favre is now somebody that's worth picking up. Now that he finally has another big play downfield threat at wide receiver, I think that Randy or I think that Brett Favre will get back into his old role. I think that this year Randy Moss will be what last year Sidney Rice was. All right, this could be a great matchup for the two. It, seriously, the combo of Randy Moss, Adrian Peterson, and Brett Favre—that's like an all-decade team. Okay, that is. That's a scary thought. And on top of that, you're getting Sidney Rice back next season, so you'll have the wide receiver trio next season if all three stick around, of Randy Moss, uh, Sidney Rice, and Percy Harvin. Anybody else scared of the Vikings yet? Because as a Bears fan, I am. Okay, after that, anybody else that improves from this, I'd have to say would probably be Brandon Tate. All right? Now... Wes Welker is probably going to stay in about the same role. He's going to get, like, a bunch of the receptions. In fact, he'll probably get even more receptions, which is a scary thought if you think about it. Wes Welker with even more receptions? Oh, he's breaking a couple records this year. I can already tell. But Brandon Tate might get the majority of the workload that Randy Moss got. Now, granted, Randy was getting a lot of work. But still, I think that the Patriots will go to him more often now that Randy Moss is out of the picture. Julian Edelman might get a little bit of a boost, but I don't see a lot more coming from him. He's the type of guy who would improve if Wes Welker went down, like we saw towards the end of last season. But Brandon Tate will probably take a big step up. Um, I'm actually predicting that Tom Brady might go down a little bit because of this. <clears throat> Excuse me. But... I don't think it's going to be too drastic. Like, you don't need to go ditching Tom Brady right now, but I'd say just wait a little while and see what happens. I mean, I think I think the Patriots have a bye week this week, so yeah, it's going to be it's not going to be that bad, but yeah, it's going to go down a little bit. And besides Tate um, and Hernandez and Gronkowski, they'll they're emerging as stars for that team. So I think that uh, the Patriots will find ways to deliver the receptions that Moss was getting to other receiving options because there's plenty of them in New England. And going back to Minnesota, I think that Adrian Peterson is going to get a pretty substantial boost, which is kind of surprising considering how high up on the, run, on the running back hierarchy he already was. But right now... Teams that go into Minnesota have to face a very difficult question. Do you put double coverage on Randy Moss, or do you put extra personnel on Adrian Peterson? Or or do you put some extra coverage on Percy Harvin, because he could break out at any moment, too? It's, it's an almost impossible question, because so, either way, you're getting burnt somehow. So, right now, I wouldn't start any defense that is playing Minnesota. Because I think that this has the or I think that Minnesota has the potential to become instantly because of this a high-powered weapon because he's going to be playing in next week's game. And what's kind of interesting is if he stays healthy throughout the entire season, he'll be playing a 17-game schedule, which is kind of rare. Like it almost never happens, seeing as how Minnesota has already done it by week, and New England's just now hitting theirs. So he'll have played in every week. Which, by the way, that means that Minnesota or that Randy Moss will actually get, he might actually get a few more yards because of that, and you won't ever have to worry about 
putting him on your bench for your bye week. So if you want Randy Moss, that's kind of a good thing. So I wouldn't worry about benching him. I think that he'll do fine in Minnesota. I think that he'll do about the same thing that he was doing uh, in New England. So don't worry about uh, benching him. He'll do fine. Don't worry. So yeah, that's just about it. See you later.